Weapons were scanned to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are back. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. Oh my God! Break! 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 Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me tonight we have Scarecrow. Hey, good evening, good evening, good evening. We have Amy, who... I'm here. ...is still making lots and lots of noise, so from now on... You are Amy the Random Noise Girl. Yay! <laughs> which, which leaves Stuart the I have no news this week guy because <laughs> I suck horribly. <laughs> hey! And joining Give us... a little bit. <laughs> joining us once again we have Metal Riff. Greetings. On tonight's show we have really own, um, two main topics. One big one and one more of a general chat. The first one being the ultimate sci-fi movie results. Applause. Woo! Okay, that was the most pathetic applause in history. I'll take it! <laughs> um, so, about a week and a half ago, we're in, we hit the, up the quarterfinals, and that's where we're going to pick off here. What we're going to do is we're going to choose our mo- movies from the list of eight to be our top three and once we've all sort of had a bit of a chat and a bit of a discussion on where we think different things should sit i will reveal who actually won so get ready for that it's gonna be good so starting off i'll just read the 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 quarterfinals list we've got star wars episodes four through six metropolis blade runner star trek movies one through six serenities the back to the future movies the Riddick movies, and the Jurassic Park movies. Now, when I started this, I grouped quite a few of the movies together. I did this intentionally so that um, different movies, so long story short, I wouldn't have 30 Trek movies and 50 Star Wars movies and 27 of Alien movies, and you know what I mean. So just to try and keep them all together to make it a bit easier for the vote. That was effectively the whole reason for doing it. Um, so... What I think we'll do is we'll start off with, from that list, everybody's number three. Start with Stuart, the no-news guy. <laughs> uh, my number three, um, I'm going to go Riddick. The, I, the Riddick movies. Riddick movies. I actually have uh, the Riddick movies. Nice. And they're probably, other other than Star Wars and uh, my number two, the f- first of... Action, like the first little action star, uh, sci-fi movie that I watched and sort of yeah. actually remember. Yeah. I don't remember much when I first watched what my number one was because yeah. I was only a kid. Yeah, well, uh, to be honest, I've only I haven't actually watched Pitch Black. Um, Pitch Black was actually really good, a bit creepy. Yes. But... Yeah, yeah, the it was only really creepy. The only yeah. one I can remember watching is the one that had the rip-off aliens in it. <laughs> yeah, I that, that was. That was uh, Pitch Black and... That was Pitch and, Black? And Riddick. Yeah. Yeah, Black was, was, yeah. It was... and then Riddick was the new one. Which was the one with Starbuck in it, that one? Yeah, Riddick. But that was across... That was the aliens were from Pitch Black as well. Yeah. Yeah, well, Riddick is the one that I've seen, so... Yeah, yeah I actually the enjoyed with, that. The one with Dave Bautista in it. That was actually really good, the whole thing with the machete digs into his shoulder. He, yeah. Yanks it out, you can see this huge gap. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Realism, folks. Sounds like a Tarantino film. Uh, what about you, Scarecrow? What was your? What would be your number three? <sighs> this is a hard one. In all honesty, I'm torn between Back to the Future and the Star Trek movies. Okay. Three for Trek. I'm sorry, but I'm disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> There were some gems in the Star Trek movies. There was some dodgy stuff in the Star Trek. Oh, yes. I see what you're looking at. Concerning if you looked at just the yeah. first thing, because if you put 
Oh, it, it's the, it's um, one through six, so you've got yeah. to sort of factor the crap in with the good stuff. Yeah, because so. if you blended those with the three next gen films, you'd have a bit more of um. Yeah. You'd have a well, bit more um an easier way of making the decision because the next gen ones had some good gems. Yeah. Well, they see, did. we 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 broke the next gen ones up from the original series ones. Wait, you just did? Because, yes. Just because we wanted to have a bit, we didn't want all the Trek movies in a clump because then we'd have original Trek movies and reboot Trek movies. We didn't want that, so I split it up so it was original oh, series no, Trek movies the... and then next gen Trek movies separately. The next gen Trek movies actually came up against Star Wars and lost catastrophically. Oh, fair, no, that's fair enough. That's a fair call. <laughs> wait, 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 which Star Wars films? Uh, four through six. Okay, I was gonna cry if we lost the prequels. Yeah, I, I can't actually remember who the prequels lost to. I'll let Stuart the News Guy look that up real quick. But I oh, just geez, remember... Fair back. Yeah, it's, it's... I think it was round one they lost. It's because everyone just voted for the other one because they hated the, the prequels. <laughs> no one likes the prequels. I, I honestly... Well, they had, they had as good a moment, so I'll give it that. They, they, they the had pod the... racing was amazing. Yeah, the pod yeah, racing was cool. Just, just the Suburbans pod... Yeah. Which, yeah, it's, it sounds an awful lot like every time Amy activates her microphone. <laughs> That's it. Amy the pod racer girl. Oh, come on. That's me. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> you sub bumps up poodle. Eh, eh, eh. I have been wanting these out loud for a long time. Sorry, Amy. Couldn't resist. Um, okay, so... I'll get you back at that. Oh, I know. To, I'm, I'm gonna shovel. I'm gonna die. You, you can't use a shovel that's reserved exclusively for Stuart. They'll bury you in cushions. It's not that, like it's not like that has it, that. it's not like that hasn't happened before. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make get all the girls to no, no. on you. No, 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 no. We'll make yeah, it this, this is this is this is sounding kinkier and kinkier, and I'm not sure where I should be going with it. <laughs> all yeah, I know yeah, is yeah. that this should be PG, so let's move away from that. Okay, so metal. We'll We'll just make Dave watch Nietzsche Joe all the time. Kill it with fire. Um, <laughs> ow, yeah, my we gotta ears. Kill, we got to kill Greg with fire. Yeah. Okay, anyway, Metal Rift, what would be your number three from those? I'm torn up between Back to the Future and Riddick. Like, let's just face it, Back to the Future has its own cult status, but I'm verging towards Riddick because I remember watching Pitch Black. That scared the living crap out of me, but... For me, was watching Chronicles. I was a little younger, um, and just the whole thing where he embeds the mug into the guy's chest. Yeah, that oh. uh, that alone was just awesome. And the whole thing against Carl Urban for me, I yeah, Riddick over the Back to the Future, but only marginally. Okay, yeah, so Amy, what would be your number three? I don't really have one. I'm sort of a Three trick, uh, three shows, and that's all I watch. A sci-fi really half the time. Okay. So for me, my number three, uh, I'm people are gonna hate me for this, but I'm gonna have to go Serenity. Hey, Serenity was okay. It's it's it it's good. I honestly like. Despite the mass murder of main characters, it was okay. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, I really enjoyed Serenity. If I'm gonna put a sci-fi movie on, it's Serenity above all other TV-based. Movies, including Star Stargate Continuum. Yes, I, th I to, be, to be honest, I don't like the Stargate movies that much. I'll watch them, but I still don't like them that much. I, I thoroughly, I thoroughly enjoyed Continuum. Oh, I'm not disagreeing. I enjoyed it. We actually saw it. Um, was it? No, I think it was Arc of Truth. They pre-aired at Supernova Brisbane. Um, many many years ago, before it had actually been aired on TV, we got a sneak peek watch of it, and that was pretty spectacular. I remember last so. year we got a uh, Sydney got a sneak peek of the uh, third episode of the uh, Star Trek Continues web series. Nice. Yeah. Yes. Um, just a random note on. Uh, no, I'll, I'll come back to that later. Okay, so we've got our number threes. I think everyone done number three. Yep. Okay, number two. What would be your number two? Oh, are we back to me? Yeah, oh, I don't know. O open to the floor. Whoever wants to say the number two first, go. Back to the future. Back to the future? Yep, I'm going back to the future for number two. Yeah, it's a good choice. Random note, Supernova's just announced its tickets for... Yes. <laughs> um, 
And did you notice there's a special Back to the Future ticket for 110 yes, bucks for a photo? You can have a I photo did. with the Doc and the DeLorean. Knew it! 110 although bucks I, for one I've photo. I've picture of Christopher Lloyd, so... Yeah, so have I, but it's Christopher Lloyd and the mother fracking DeLorean. That is something I am doing. Did she just make a Battlestar reference? Maybe a little. Alright, so, Scarecrow, number two. Once again, slightly torn. Uh, it's pretty much Serenity and Riddick. Tossing up between those two. Um, uh, I'm pretty. That's odd. <laughs> Riddick was pretty good. It had it had its gems. Serenity was just brilliant. But I don't like to go with every man, woman, and child out there who seem to be, have turned into Serenity or into far into fanboys and fangirls for that series ever since Serenity came out and was as popular as it was. To be honest, most people's entry into Firefly was via Serenity. I, I'm so, guilty of that. I'm exactly. All... Yeah. yeah so, I was a I'm... Firefly fan before Serenity. Yeah. Hip stuff. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Whoa! <laughs> David, you have some mandatory re-education. Oh, sorry, Scarecrow, you have mandatory re-education you need to do. You have lots of that to do. I'm well aware. Uh, well um, mine's Jurassic Park, actually. Yeah. Now, a couple of people actually had issue with Jurassic Park being in the, the sci-fi list. I looked at it this yeah. way. Ancient dinosaurs, cloning, supercomputers. It's, Deal with it. It's science... It's, it's like, um... It's like classic science fiction, kind of like... Yeah. The day the Earth stood still set on Earth, it, it was fiction with science, not science with fiction. Exactly. And this was so definitely in the science with fiction sort of category because cloning's technically a thing, and but it's since been proven that you can't technically clone a dinosaur because of well, the yeah, half life, because of the half life and DNA and stuff like that. But we won't it's go actually, into the sciencey side because sciencey you, side is hard. Um, and one anecdote on that is actually um, it's been proven you'll get the furthest you can go is um um. It's, a century after the dinosaurs has become, become extinct. Uh, so. n no, the furthest you can go is 30,000 years ago. Um, assuming that it's in a uh, bone. If you try yeah. to sequence dinosaur DNA like they did in the movie, it's so fragmented by that point that you're lucky to get a couple of things in order, like a couple of letters in order, out of billions. So rebuilding that thing, and that's if it was like done as the dinosaurs died, is not the easiest task. And for another lesson of genetics, go watch Gattaca. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Anyway, my number two would actually be um, would actually be Star Wars. I I know I've got a lot of Star Wars fanboys on here, and I know Stuart just shot himself in the head with a lightsaber because hey, we're okay with this, and we're all, we're all okay with this because it's Stuart. He's easily replaceable. <laughs> exactly. Hello, Amy. <laughs> hey, I've been here longer. <laughs> um, anyway, the, the Star Wars movies to me were good. And yes, they've got a cult following. But if you actually sit down and look at them, they're not that good. There are so many consistencies. It's like... Look, it's been a while since I've really watched through... I've, the um I've trilogy. Got, I've got them. Yeah, I've got them all on Blu-ray, and actually, the, the you know that Blu-ray set JB Hi-Fi's got. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got them all on that, and it might be sort of, kind of signed by Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia oh, and Han okay. Solo and uh, what's his face, George Lucas. Might have I might have been able to get it signed by them. But that's beside the point. Um, <laughs> I, I, I so I watch through about, them all the time, but I, it's can I just say still, something about Episode Six? Yeah. On the Blu-rays and all the remasters, episode six, Return of Hayden Christensen. Just saying. Leaving that alone, walking away. <laughs> yeah. This, see, like at the, even at the end of number five, which is touted as the best of the best Star Wars movies. It is. It is. It's the one I can consistently watch out of order. Yeah. And always love it. Yeah. Um, 
what's his name, Lando, at the end of it, is in the Falcon in Han Solo's clothes, the guy you just betrayed, and is flying off into the distance. You know exactly where this guy is, and it still takes you, what, four, five years to come to his rescue? What the hell, guys? Wait, wait, I, really? That's the time gap between Jedi and, and uh, it's, Empire? It's meant to be something like that. I thought it was a few months at the most. No. Oh, no, that explains, because Luke would have completed his training by then. Yes. So, yeah, anyway, I think, Stuart, are you there? I think he's dead. Oh, no, I'm here. I think we killed Stuart by talking bad about Star Wars. <laughs> yep, there he goes. Anyway. Stuart, have we done your number two? I think we did. Yes, yeah. mine, mine was Back to the Future. That's right. Whose number two haven't we done? Mine. Yours? Yeah. I agree. I Next. agree. It's Star Wars. It's Star Wars number two. I, I'm i saying this. I'm treating this as the series as a whole. I enjoyed all si all the films bar episode three. I'm saying it right now. No. Yeah. What, you didn't like Anakin killing the kids? No, I just didn't like episode three. It was too much drama. Yeah, it, it, episode three did drag on a bit. But yeah. It, it, but it did have Palpatine throwing the Senate at Yoda, so... That, yeah, that, yeah, was, yeah, that was sick. That Jedi was Frisbee. Pretty, Jedi, <laughs> Jedi Frisbee. That was pretty badass. And the opening scene, like, the opening yeah. scene was amazing. Yeah. That's uh, the same reason I enjoyed playing Star Wars Battlefront 2 so much. It was just all the uh, space, space battles. battles. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things I sort of miss from the Halo games, to be honest. Just just jumping off on a side. There's one thing the Halo games have never had, and they were going to do it in Halo Reach, just never never happened. Was, it did. Was space battles. Yeah, that was a level. It doesn't count. I mean multiplayer. Oh. Like, actual multiplayer for Halo Reach, they were looking at doing a Covenant ship on one side and the human ship on the other, and you fight between the two. That is sick. That would have been epic, but it was cut because it was proved too difficult and too laggy online. Yeah, it would have been. But, that yeah. would have been insane. I, I can actually remember playing on the big 32 man servers on PC, and I still remember when some, when three or more people let off um, mi homing missiles. Yeah, the lag, there was a big spike. Yeah. So anyway, back on the list. So um, we've all done our twos. So that just leaves the ones. I'm going to start with Amy because she's the new Stuart. So Amy, the new Stuart. <laughs> we'll come up with a nickname that'll stick eventually. Amy so Bobo. We're sticking with Sabova. Sticking with Sabova. No, Mayrin. Um, <laughs> actually, Flubber. I'm going to throw that one in. Flubber. Wild card Flubber. It's Flubber! It's not science fiction. Technically, it's science fiction. It's a Disney, it's a Disney film. The only science fiction film they ever made was Treasure Planet. Mm, yes and no. It's, it's again, not anime! It's, it's science-y stuff with fiction. So, science-y fiction? We'll go with that. Again, <laughs> like really crossing the line, just like Jurassic Park. Yeah, it's right on the the, the, the edge. Well, think of it this way: Mr. Squiggle's science fiction. We got to accept it. So, if Mr. Squiggle's science fiction, sorry, Flubber mm. is sort of science fiction. So I'll I'll allow it. I'll allow it. And since I am God on this podcast, I have the final say. <laughs> so, scarecrow. Come on, they make a flying car. Yeah, it's, it's just pretty cool. And they got those in Back to the Future, so science Exactly. Science so. enough. So, okay. Scarecrow, number one. <sighs> Say it. Blade Runner. Yeah. Wow. That's a bit of a shock. Yeah. What? I'm different from everyone else. Uh, I know, but of all the powerhouses you choose Blade Runner all, it's a good call. But still. Yeah. Blade Runner's a good movie. I've got it on Blu-ray. I've watched it quite a few times. Some of the visual effects in that are pretty spectacular. Um, what about you, Stuart the not-quite-fired-yet guy? <laughs> oh, come on. For those who know me, there's only one answer for this. Yes, there is only one answer to this. It's Metropolis. <laughs> no, it's Star Wars. It's Star Wars. It's what yeah. I fell in love with when I was a child. 
Yeah. And, I gotta, and my my favorite, to be honest, is actually episode four. Yeah. Hey, four was good. Four was good. Because blowing up Death Star and Porkins. Yeah. Hey, Porkins is cool. <laughs> I I just Fire love Porkins. I love the Family Guy version of Porkins. Yes. You just see him. He's like the the. The, hey, ex, the, the X wing is, is buried in his ass crack, <laughs> and it's just grinding <laughs> along the Death Star. Don't you mean an ass wing? <laughs> Stay on target. Stay on target. <laughs> he done fucked up. Uh, yeah. For me, number one isn't. It's for me. It's difficult because it's a toss up. Between Jurassic Park and, on at least the ones on this list, Jurassic Park and Back to the Future. It's not that I don't like the Trek movies, but they're TV follow-on movies and they they can be blug. Blade Runner I enjoy. Metropolis I genuinely have only seen bits and pieces of, because that's sort of all that survived. Um, the Riddick movies I've only seen one of. Serenity was lower down the list. Star Wars was lower down the list, so that was be Jurassic Park and Back to the Future. Back to the Future has it only yeah. because I want my photo taken with Doc Brown and the DeLorean. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, to be perfectly honest, he's the only star I've ever been Star Trek getting a picture with was, was Christopher Lloyd. Yeah. I, I, I went in and I couldn't say words. I was just like, eh, bleh, bleh, bleh. Uh, I thought I'd have trouble saying stuff to Stan Lee or John Barrowman and over last year, but I went through that pretty well. Yeah. Alright, so who hasn't done the number ones yet? That'd be me. Again. Uh, we don't need you. Yeah. Oh, shush. <laughs> um, <laughs> we are so nice and caring here. Just because oh. I'm south of the border, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're, also, you're also the younger, so it's easy to pick on you. Yeah. You see, see, us Canadians have got to be really nice to you Americans because you've got guns and you're scary. <laughs> well, yeah. it's also the fact that I'm the more, most, I'm probably one of the more mature ones on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, joking on nothing. Coincidental, I swear. Oh God. Um. Well, hands down, Trek. 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 Hands down. For me, the one thing that seals the deal, it's. Ricardo, Ricardo Montalban's performance as Khan in Wrath of Khan, it's precise, it's brilliant, it's malicious. I just love it. His monologues alone... I'll, I'll grant you that. I will grant you it, that he it, was good as Khan. It gets me every time. It's the one track film I can watch over and over and over without... Hell, I could watch it three times in one sitting and be okay with it. But I, I must admit... Into Darkness was better. Get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> you, sir, deserve to be hit. <laughs> oh, that, I, I couldn't resist. Actually, I couldn't resist. Though. But seriously, though. Speaking yeah. of calm, Khan, like, like you uh, you say like you love listening to Khan. For me, I always love li- listening to him, Grand Moff Tarkin. Yeah, Peter Cushing, I can admit that. That's... That's one of the cool things about Wars was always the villains. I've always been a big fan of the villains in the films over the in over the heroes for some reason. It's they've got such a certain coldness to them that makes them so precise and so well, not, and and his overconfidence. Like it, it, like yeah. when um, when the ex when Luke's getting close and he's like retreat in our hour of victory. I think not. Yeah, it's. It's just how he does it. He's just brilliant. I just love his delivery. In it. yeah, Peter Cushing was awesome. Uh, okay, so now what the one person who on the list who I don't recognise um, has been waiting for <laughs> the results for who won number one, number two, and number three as voted by the fans. Drum roll, wait, we'll save the drum roll for number one. So, oh, I actually, actually have drum roll ready. Coming in at number three, it, to be honest, it's only number three because of the block that it was in. It was up against Star Wars, it didn't really stand a chance, and to be honest, it, got, it got absolutely steamrolled. Well, so, 
Coming in at number three is Star Trek movies one through six. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. no, we did not lose to you know, no, yes. I'm yeah, sorry. you did. You, oh yes, you did. We lost to Serenity. So, coming in. Spoilers. Yeah. Hey, everyone's seen it. Everyone's seen the post. I haven't actually posted the results online yet. No, I've but that, the here. fact that the final was between Serenity and Star Wars. Yes, the final was between Serenity and Star Wars. So I'm in okay saying that. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> Star Trek beat out Jurassic Park by about half a dozen votes. Um, which, okay. which isn't bad. No. So, in the finals we had Serenity versus Star Wars. And thanks to a retweet by Nathan Fillion, not joking... Um, Serenity got a ridiculous amount of it votes. Was insane! I saw you that. had to like, put that to. You had to bring that to Nathan Fillion's attention. Dude, anything for some likes. Anything. Dang. Even sell out one of the greatest series in science fiction history. Yes, I'm not above. I'm not above, above that. I'll more than happily sell Star Wars down the river. Technically, for the Star Trek vote, I did share it with Shatner, and he didn't retweet it, so you can... Yeah, but you can... Sh- <laughs> you, dude, you would have been sharing it with Will Wheaton. I shared... You should have shared it with George Takei. He definitely will have retweeted it. Yes. I, I, I shared it with... Um, I shared the Serenity votes with Fillion. I shared the Trek votes with Shatner. And I shared the Star Wars votes with... I can't remember. Um... Oh. I shared them with somebody. But anyway, um, so the final, one and two, came down to three votes in between oh, them. God. Oh, God. I actually went to the effort for the second time of double counting and making sure that I hadn't screwed up somewhere. Because to be perfectly honest, I expected a bloodbath. Yeah. Um, when it came to the TV series, Serenity, uh, sorry, Firefly was knocked out in only like the second or third round. I can't generally remember when it was knocked out. It was really early on. I'm surprised and, that it was Firefly that lost before Serenity. Um, no, this is back when we were doing the TV one. Because oh. we did a TV vote, now we're doing a, then we did a movie vote. Um, so, and so as a result, I expected Serenity to make it to the quarterfinals, but that's about it. Um, it was up against Back to the Future. It was down and out for the count. I figured Back to the Future's been romping the whole way through. Back to the Future should kill it. And then... That's bullshit. Out of <laughs> nowhere, the, the oh, brown... Brown coats. Brown coats from behind, from the front, from the other side, and all of a sudden, before I realised what the hell was going on, Back to the Future was on the ground crying like a little girl. That's so, only Biff. And then it just it just gained momentum and momentum and momentum, and before I knew it, Serenity had made it all the way into the final round up against Star Wars. Now, Star Wars we knew was going to be at the very least top three. It knocked out some big players. It was up against two thousand and one: A Space Odyssey. That was the closest vote it had. It was one vote between the two of them. That was the other one I double counted um, just to make sure. And it just won like literally the difference between the two. Um, and so on Star Wars went, it came up against the next gen movies and yeah. it just yeah. went. Landslide, landslide. Sorry, next gen, you got destroyed. It, I can say this insurrection sucked. It, it wrecked house. For all fairness, it wrecked house. And found itself at the top of block A. Serenity was the top of block B. If... We're going. We should finish this up, dude. We're already half halfway through. I know. I know. I know what I'm Plenty doing. Plenty of time. We've got stuff. I, I can drag this out for thirty minutes if you want me to. Anyway, um, now that I've got the backstory for both of them out of the way, I can get to who won. You want a drum roll? No. Yes. Most pathetic drum roll ever. No, most drum roll ever. So, so anyone that hears that should pitch a comic book man. Most pathetic drum roll ever. Ever. I could have got a noisier one. No. (laughs) Too late. (laughs) Too late. So, what the hell was that? Anyway, so we have the winner. The winner is... Star Wars movies yep. four, five, and six. 
by three votes. By That's three impressive. votes over Serenity. Oh, that it makes was me happy. so close. Nathan Philly, you nearly gave me a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> bad, bad Sorry, Nathan. Brown coach. Bad the Nathan Philly. Win, the Rebels win this time. Yes. <laughs> Damn those Rebels. One of these days. Filthy Rebels. Yeah, filthy one of, Rebels scum. One of these days. One of these days. Pow! Right to the Death Star. Pow! Right the Kisher. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, also, yes, I am sitting in my Jedi robe and I have my lightsaber with me. That... Doesn't surprise us that much. No. Alright. Oh, Oz Twilight, are you lucky, lucky girl? You have a catch. <laughs> she loves me. Uh, Alright, anyway. Anyway. Somehow I got that. Um, who here, just really quickly, just to, to, to check, because I forgot to before the show, who here has seen Jupiter Ascending? Uh, yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. You guys all suck. I have. I was going to talk about it, but now we can't, so moving on. I haven't on. had the time. Yes, you and your underwater problems. It's only a little bit of water. Get a hovercraft. No, I'm in New... I know. You're in New South Wales, I know, but um, the other everyone else on the podcast is currently in Queensland, so... Yeah. We still got flooded. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. I didn't! I got close, but I didn't. <laughs> I got really close, actually. You're kidding me? It's been, it was 27 degrees today. Stuart the sandbag, man. <laughs> oh, I should take a picture and actually show you how many sandbags there is. You really should. Um, There's at least, I'd probably say, a dozen, maybe more of them. Wow. We all don't of... follow sandbags here. No. It's not worth it. So, anyway, so let's move on to the other topic, the last topic of the night. Um, Before we start... Spoilers! Yes. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Ow. That was my really ears. Need... They're bleeding now. Thank you. We really need to get a soundboard. Yes, we, be we really need to get sound effects. I'm just too poor. Anyway. I'll make one. I'll make one. Don't worry. <laughs> so, anyway. So, Gotham, Arrow, Agent Carter, Flash. Um, they're the current running superhero shows. With... Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. starting up next week. Yeah, which is why I want to do a recap now, so that we can sort of catch up on all of these before we get totally buried. So, let's start with Agent Carter. What do you guys think of Agent Carter overall so far? I've only seen the first few episodes, but it's actually really good. Yeah, Marvel did a really good, Marvel and Netflix did a really good job with it. God love Netflix. Uh, Scarecrow? I've seen the first couple episodes as well. It's got a lot of potential, but it's not there yet as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I'm, I'm up to date on it, so I've seen right up to the most recent episode. And since you guys haven't, I won't really throw around too, I many, have. too many spoilers. You don't count. Um, Never do. <laughs> um, uh, Stuart the I love you, Stuart guy. Anyway. Barker. Uh, <laughs> Good to say, Barker. Yeah. And He's not an idiot. <laughs> you sure about that? What? You sure, are you sure he's not an idiot? Uh, it would explain a lot. Anyway, so Agent Carter for me was good to begin with, but has waned considerably. Yeah. It's reached the point where I'm actually not sure. Like, Gotham, to me, started off mediocre and has held that bar fairly level. Agent oh, Carter started off... Agent Carter started off pretty good, and, and it's... And got bad. And it's just fallen down and down and down. And I think it's just because it's, it's dragging, if you know what I mean. Like, they, they're not quite sure... Where what, to go with it. Yeah, it's sort of a... We've got this character, let's do something with it type story. Oh, and we're then, not... Yeah, they haven't found something good to do with yeah. it just yet. But, well, they said that the biggest problem is you can't really put her in danger. <gasps> and you can't put her in danger because you saw, it, you saw her at 112 years old talking to Captain America. So you know that no matter how much danger you put her in... She's going to live. She's going to live. Jarvis, you know, dies. The Stark, you know, dies. So, and you even know how they die. So it's 
it's it's really hard to do a flashback series and actually put tension on characters. Um, I'm curious as to yeah. where they go with Leviathan, but yeah, mm. um, that's just my thoughts on Agent Carter so far. Well, um, does anyone know the release date for Daredevil? Um, yeah, still with the news guy. Go, still with the news guy. Go. Um, let's move on to Arrow slash Flash. Um, how up to date are you guys on that? I don't watch it, <laughs> so I don't care. <laughs> Fair enough. Arrow and Flash. Oh, I'm up to date with everything. Up to date. I haven't seen it yet. I am uh, so uh, far behind, it ain't even funny. Quick, uh, quickly on Daredevil, April 10th this year. April 10th, so before Supernova, just. Just, yeah, about a week before Supernova. Nice. Wait, June the 10th? April. April. Oh, right, I was going to say. Not Back my Supernova. Up. Our Supernova, not your Supernova. <laughs> yeah, one of the two ones we get up in Queensland. Yeah. Suck See. it. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, I mean, Arrow and Flash. Arrow and Flash. Um, to be honest, I'm over Flash. <laughs> I only watch it now because it ties into Arrow. That's yeah. it. Arrow, I enjoy still, but Flash is definitely sort of... Oh no, he runs fast. How are we going to stop him? I know. Yeah. A freeze gun. Oh no, he's on fire. He needs to run really fast to create a vacuum to put the fire out. It's like, eh. Yeah, that's Wouldn't the problem with the to run to an ocean? What? What was that, Amy? Wouldn't it be easier to run to an ocean? You'd think. Um, that's the problem with the Flash. He only has one way to solve problems with speed. Yeah. And, and no kids, do we, do we do not endorse drugs. Yeah. And that's one of the things that... Um, a lot of the comic book writers complain about with trying to write stories for Flash. It's yeah. really hard to write a story for a guy that's only ability is to run quickly. It's like, it's, yeah. Um, so, overall, I'm getting over Flash. The Arrow, on the other hand, if, I'm still enjoying. So I'm surprised yeah. if Flash will last another season, to be honest. Yeah. I, I honestly don't know what the ratings are doing. I haven't looked into that. Um, no, neither have I. So, so Stuart the News Guy fails again. <laughs> he's not this, he's not fired what? yet he's not fired yet um so and actually and, uh where did I see an interesting thing with Flash we're getting another villain added in yay the, uh, another the, uh, another villain it's, a, it's actually a really strange villain actually to be honest is it Groot or Groot or whatever the hell the well, like, Grod's, Grod's actually been showing up so yeah. we know he's gonna because he's actually getting TV time. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool when you when you saw him at the end of the other ep the episode. Uh, the we, other are, we are getting Death Bolt. Death Bolt. Give me a second. Uh, Let me look up my. I've got my DC book right in front of me. Death you. Bolt. Death Bolt. Um, where are you? Black Hand. Captain Somebody. Wait, is that Captain Action? Wow, they're, they're not even trying anymore. No. Desperado, Deathstroke, The Demon, Deadshot. Deadshot, was that the thing you said? No, Death Bolt. You won't, no. you, you won't get him in. He's a C-list um, villain. Like, he's really one of the very obscure villains. His power is um, in the comic source to manipulate um, electricity, but he'll control plasma energy as a metahuman. That's pretty cool. And that's actually going to lead back over into another uh, Flash Arrow crossover because it's actually going to appear in Arrow as well. Nice. See, I'm not. I don't. I do do some news. Yay! Stuart, the not quite fired yet, but it could still happen, guy. He's been fired so many times; it's not even funny. Yeah, I know. It's, it's we fire him. We we open up the door. We point, and he just sits there and stares at us, and we feel sorry for him. So uh... we, just, we don't kick him out. Um, I, I'm actually a little disappointed, actually, with the Rise of Flash, because I'm going to spoil the show now. Go right ahead. Uh, they, uh, so Cisco and, I can't remember the cop's name. Yeah. 
Um, they go back to Barry's parents' house. Oh, you mean um, that the, the time loop thing? Yeah. Yeah. So they find they they um they find a mirror that was that was that was um there that um at, at the time when um Barry's mum uh, was killed. I call and, I call hacking the matrix on that mirror just saying. Yeah, that was really bizarre. Anyway, um, they show they prove that there has uh, photographic images on it, so they bring it up and it shows the two speedsters. Then it shows that there's a blood spatter hiding behind a wall of paper. They analyze the blood and it finds out and it finds out to be Barry's blood from the future. So somehow, so somehow, eventually in the show, Barry's gonna go back in time to stop to stop uh, Professor Zoom killing his mum. Which is sort of weird when you think about it, because I don't think Professor Zoom was the one that killed Barry's mum. Because no, I, they, I, I always, a... they always go for the weird twisty twist. Yeah, I have a feeling she sacrificed herself. Yeah. To st- but what the problem I have with this is that I wish they didn't make it Barry's blood. God, I wish they would have made it Impulse. Hey, guys, I perfect. actually have, I actually have some news. Okay. This is a follow-up, a long follow-up from the Ghostbusters announcement. Oh, boy. Oh, God. All right, um... Dan Aykroyd saying that he still has a script surface where, um... Um, that it's also going to the fact what he was talking to with uh, Phage about the new, the uh, all-female reboot. It's... Essentially, it's an Abrams film. And if any Trek fan knows what I'm talking about, an alternate timeline. Oh, I was just going to say lots of, of, of lens flare. Yeah. Lens, fa- lens flare for years. It's not even lens flare for days. It's lens flare for years. I can't even imagine what the proton packs will do. <laughs> they, they, they fire it up and it just they, they aim it and it goes, oh, 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 stay alive, and stay alive. And you're like, oh, what the oh. f- <laughs> And then, um... It'd be, it'd be more funny if it was like, I will survive! <laughs> and now, this, the second that's one, there's another one that Aykroyd's had in circulation for ages, which is a direct follow-up. Well, not a direct, but like, it's the same timeline. And there's also a third one, which actually came out from the Sony hacks from a few months ago. Oh, that's funny. With the idea of being a, sort of a uh, Batman Begins spin-off sort of thing, kind of how um, Christopher Nolan did his Batmans, but instead of Finkman and Remus, you'd have Channing Tatum and Chris Pratt. Oh, that's different. Yeah, I'm hopefully if hopefully Aykroyd does get gets his script working, but. I I'm really really skeptical on the uh, all female one as I am the new Terminator. Oh God! Don't get started on the new Terminator. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the new Terminator isn't gonna be that bad. It's oh. lazy writing. I'm saying it right now. All right, back back to TV shows. Yes, back to TV shows. The actual topic of the day. Yeah, let's recap Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Sure, why not? Go right ahead, Stuart the News Guy. Alright, so, at the end of s- the season... I We're up to season, season two and a half now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, two and a half, we learn that the Inhumans are coming back. Yeah, well, baby. That the Inhumans are coming. For those who don't know who the Inhumans are, the Inhumans... I'll take it this up because I'm not actually very good with the inhu- inhuman law. Stuart, the failed at the news guy. I'm Hold a on. DC person. Wait. Wait, I have good use. I've got my encyclopedia right. Too bad, too bad. I'm already ahead of you. I've got it like right here in my hands. I'm already so... Wikipedia. <laughs> Forget Wikipedia, man. You got to hit the books. All right, I've got it up here. Okay, I'm calling it Stuart. Oh, come on! Ah, So the humans are um, a a fictional race of... uh, Well, they're superhumans that appear in various uh, comic book series and Marvel. Their first appearance was in Fantastic Four number 45, which was released in 1965. Though members Medusa and Gorgon appeared earlier. 
As did, yeah, because Medusa was also a temporary serving member for the Fantastic Four. Four, yes. So, this is interesting because who or how many of the Inhumans are going to come? Or how many are they going to use is the question. 11 to 12. Submit. 11 to 12, that's how many they're using. For me, as long as I get to see Black Bolt come out again, I'll be yes, happy. Yes, I want to see a Black Bolt. I remember watching some of his original animated appearances. Black Bolt is awesome. Yeah, um, I'm just looking from what I see here. They're the Kree, so they were basically servants to Ronan. Now, yes. seeing how this laid out from Guardians of the Galaxy, this is yeah. gonna, their backstory is going to be altered. Yeah, a little altered. Oh well. Well, sometimes not, sacrifice. Not everything, not everything follows of comics. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like <laughs> three. <laughs> Sounds like crying. Sounds like somebody's crying. Ah. There we go. Um. You sound on. like a oh. villager. Ah. <laughs> no more Minecraft for Amy. Good luck Sorry, with when that. I, when I thought of villager, I thought of um, of, of um, Super Smash Brothers villager. I play with lots of villagers. All right. Um. Yep. Inhumans hinted. Keep going. Yes. Um. What else? <laughs> uh, actually, there was a new trailer that dropped. Actually, uh, a little bit of a teaser trailer dropped uh, during the Oscars. Actually, over in America. It was about 30 seconds long. It showed um, Sky. Five. Yeah, I know her name. I actually watched the. DC it 5. <laughs> Maybe DC, but I still watch it. Um, it shows Sky. Uh, she's sort of uh, pacing around. And then it, it pans, and um, she's sort of saying uh, she didn't have a family, then, then she'll took her in, yada, yada, yada. Then she said there's something inside of her that. That if it ever escaped, it would change everything, and it shows her in a containment um sort of cell. Ooh. Okay, okay so now it looks like we're finding they're gonna pull, they're gonna uh, unveil every card they can for Sky. Probably. Well, they don't have much of a choice at this point. No. She's in a test tube. No, it's not that small. No. It's 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 a proper like containment cell where she's like banging on the on the on the um on the glass trying to get out, but it doesn't. Sh However, to it doesn't, the... it doesn't show Coulson or anyone looking back at her. So similar to the time when she was dying in season one. Yeah. Sort of, but a lot bigger. <laughs> yeah, that that um aired during the Oscars over in the states. So nice. Right. Oh, what well, she's sitting in Hulk cell. Yeah, she's got her own cell. Well, what it shows um, on the ground actually is that it shows the earth, um, the ground is actually sort of uh, like an earthquake, and it's sort of like splitting in half. So I wonder what what that entails. I don't know if that's just like what her, what the inside of her looks like, or what it actually means. Negative zone. <coughs> Negative zone. That could be a, another thing. Which is what I was hoping that the new Fantastic Four movie was hinting at. Uh. I'm sorry, I just don't want Dr. Doom to be a hacker. <laughs> yeah. Why? Fo why, Fox? Why? Because he, cause Fox hates all of us and they're money grubbers? Well, yeah. and then Marvel hates them even more. Did you hear they've officially cancelled... Cancelled the Fantastic Four comic book line? Yeah. Lol. We're not joking. They've act they actually because um, Fox told the actors to not read any of the comics. Marvel decided to completely can the, the entire Fantastic Four comic book series. Wow, that is what you call vindictive. Yeah, it's about as you <laughs> and for that it's about the same use of supplying the Green Lantern comics to Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, Ooh. technically. He does have a little bit of a point. Thank you. We have ten. What? We have nine ten. minutes. Ten minutes, yeah. Yeah, ten minutes. I know. I'm keeping an eye on it. 
Okay, so Stuart, since it's the the normal time when you do the news, yeah. let's do uh, the news. All right. So, uh, what was posted on the sa- on the um on the Facebook page is that some Australians have made to have have decided to resurrect Gladiator Jewels with carbon fiber suits. These look amazing. Oh my god. Take my money and give me one. Stop drooling already. Oh, can I chip in here? Yes. Sure. Alright, now, this is for all of us anime and model kit lovers out there, plus those of us who like to collect random items. A very good friend of mine has just opened a new web store. The 105th Armory. I've been linking it on Save Sci-Fi. Exactly. He's just got it open. Doesn't have much of a range of yet, but he does have some pretty good stuff. He's got Zoids. Yeah. All I care about is the fact that he has Zoids. And yeah, I'm he's happy got about Zoids. That. He's got Macross. Although Macross is still growing in, in list. We're waiting on, an, on the next shipment to arrive in about two or three weeks on them. And there are more Zoids coming in that same shipment, so even better for you, Dave. Woohoo! Uh, he's got some pretty awesome other stuff. And if you're a hardcore Gundam modeler, like I know there will be some people out there who are, he also has got in a range of the hardest things to find for a Gundam model, frame arms kits. Oh. Yes, they are not actually Gundam kits, but they are completely compatible with the high grade range, which makes them really good for modifications. Customize! Build, build, modify, modify. <laughs> so get in there, guys. Have a look around, and you'll do you know, one hell of a deal. You'll also be starting, uh, or attending conventions starting from Sydney Gold Co- from Sydney Nova. That's pretty good. So, uh, just found some news. Actually, this is interesting. This oh, is a finally! <laughs> <laughs> this is a rumor, and this is actually a really big rumor. There's a rumor going out that the next Spidey will not be Peter Parker. Yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. Oh I heard about God. Black so, uh, Jeff Jeff Snyder from the Rap dropped a potential bombshell on um on his podcast. He said this is not set in stone, but he said Spider-Man is 95 percent not going to be white, which means we could get Miles. That'd be cool, and it would add but, a little bit of variety to the Avengers. Uh, I know, but the only problem is it just it won't work because it, it's going to go right against all the people that see Spidey as a white teenage kid. Yeah. Oh, here's one. Here's a question for you guys. Well, sorry, can I finish? What else? Yeah, like let's just face it. If, if there's a non-white, if Peter Parker is not the next Spider-Man, it's going to ruin whatever work everyone's been hyping for to see. Spider-Man finally joined the Avengers. It's ruining 12 years, at least, of hype. In what way? Think about it. They've just announced that Spider-Man's going... that Spider-Man's joining the MCU. We need Peter Parker for a few movies. Sure, Black Spider-Man later on, but we need Peter Parker first. They can't disregard him completely. What about one of the Parker clones? Uh, Ben, what's his name? Um, 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 um. I guess he takes over as Parker for a while. Yes. When they don't know, know who's who. Fair. Yeah. I know what you're referring oh, to. Oh yeah, I, I know. Who, yeah, I know who you're talking about. See, this is why I'm DC. <laughs> don't bite me. <laughs> anyway, DC can't put a coherent yeah. storyline together if you tie it together with a with whips and chains and point out how to do it. They will still fuck it up. Unless, well, they can always go uh, for the Mexican Spider-Man, as seen in 2099, um, Miguel. The only storylines DC can do well are animated ones. Yes. Marvel yep, I agree tends with that to, one. Marvel tends to be bad at animated, good at live action. DC is, let's be blunt, with the exception of recent Batman movies, pretty horrible at live action. And, oh, it's Clooney! <laughs> and fairly decent at animated stuff, so it's, it's sort of a fair balance. Anyway, yeah, that, that, yeah, Scarecrow, you had something to say a minute ago, and then was... Mm. Yeah. Uh, my question is this. 
the new movie Kingsman. Would you count that as sci-fi? No. I haven't seen it. Hmm. It's not science fiction. It's a Jane. It's a spy film. Yeah, yeah but they've got enough in there that could potentially be considered science fiction. No, 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 no. James. Now you, no, now you're just picking. James just Bond picking. is sci-fi by definition. It yes, is. It's a spy film, but it's also classed as sci-fi. On the the one where they go to the oh, moon. It's, it's, the, um, it's soft sci-fi. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's like softer than a baby's ass, maybe, but. No, we've had we've got softer stuff than that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, again, don't, please don't make me, don't force me to. I find you force me to upside down. Upside down. <laughs> hurry up! Hurry up! <laughs> oh, right, look, 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 Kingsman. No, James Bond. No, they're action films. They're spy films. There's no way they can be classified except Moonraker. That's the only difference where there was some space element into it. But space, what, the laser in your watch wasn't, yeah. wasn't good enough? The, the, the problem is, a lot of people equate sci-fi to space. That's the thing. Sci-fi yeah. isn't just space. That's the thing. It's not. Sci-fi and space, yes, they're synonymous. But they're not the same thing. There is sci-fi movies that don't involve space at all. Again, back to the future. No space whatsoever. Still sci-fi. Because the futuristic technology. Yes, and, and laser watches, rings that can shatter glass, cars that can turn invisible, Other cars, cars that are full of more guns than the American military. Do Other I board. seriously need to go too much further than that to sort of say, look, ah, it's an action but movie, reason, but it's a sci-fi reason, movie as well. <laughs> No, it isn't. The reason why Back to the Future's sci-fi is time travel. Yes, and flying car. That's Nuclear the whole point. Reactor. That's, the, that's the still time travel. It's the one reason that Back to the Future is considered science fiction. Except, yeah, I'm not disagreeing with that. What I'm saying is that people view space as synonymous with sci-fi, and it's not. James Bond has a lot of sci-fi elements in it that a lot of people watch under the table and go, oh, it's just a spy movie. Quite a lot of the spy movies have large amounts of science fiction in them, but they're swept under the table. It's mainly weapons and sci-fi tech, which they use for their spy missions. Look at the TV show Chuck, for instance. <laughs> Chuck, was, Chuck was terrible, I'm just saying. Chuck was great. I love Chuck. I can marathon <laughs> Chuck all day. Anyway. What about Spy Kids? Spy Kids? as much as I hate to admit it would under that definition would fall into soft sci-fi only the third one sci-fi definitely hell no the second one the third one because he had a very Tron feeling no no, no. the I... second one he ha second one he has a robot bug I deleted I love those that movies bug. from my brain for a reason I love I love I love, <laughs> that, bug. I love that bug I love that bug I have all five of them <laughs> Wait, 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 there's... They, I... what? What? <laughs> I know there's the original three and then there was a preview, but there's a fifth? Yep. Uh, oh, kill God. It with... What okay, fuck? put it... Okay, how about this? If Power Rangers is science fiction, which we have defined Power Rangers as a science fiction... You have? Yes. Yes. Giant I'm robots sorry, of they're... doom that combine from based on animals and any other... Yeah, they can come no, up fair with. enough, fair enough. And giant there robots. are two seasons that are specifically in space. Yeah. So. Lost Galaxy, Power Rangers in space, space. exactly that one. So, uh, there's a time traveling one. As a result, because some elements of it are sci fi, it all falls under the sci fi umbrella. You admitted that one of the James Bond's movies falls under the sci fi umbrella. Moonraker and Moonraker only. Therefore, they all fall under sci fi because it's all the same thing. You can't just go, oh look, Star Trek 2, that is awesome, it is sci-fi. Oh, the rest of Star Trek, that's not sci-fi because it's not awesome. It's um, all or nothing. What about the jetpacks? Okay, anyway, we've got 45 seconds left. The... Yeah, I'm not going through any more news. Yeah. All I want to say is, there, I, I heard a major nothing. spoiler rumour to do with the Star Wars movie. I'm giving oh, yes, you guys... Oh yes, I saw that. I'm giving you guys... Um, 15 seconds to turn your headphones off before I splab it all over the place. 
<laughs> and Solo died. Good night, all. Damn it, he stole my thunder. <laughs> Stuart, I hate to say it, you crossed the line. Guess what? You are totally, totally, totally clickby. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> really? No. <laughs> 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 <laughs>